Hi, my name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops. Today, I'm going to show you a multiple layer acrylic Venetian plaster technique using our Toscano plaster and our walnut wax. So, let's get our tools, let's get our materials, and let's get started. So, the first thing we're going to do to get ready for this finish is, of course, base coat the surface. Today, we're base coating it with the quartz base primer, just simply, I have a lot of it, I'm going to use it. Um, because we're using Toscano acrylic plaster, we can use any flat finish material. So it could be a paint, it could be a primer. As long as it's a flat, flat surface, it'll stick to it. It won't stick to bare drywall. Well, it'll stick to bare drywall, it just won't stick to drywall or joint compound because of the chalkiness in the joint compound. So flat latex primer, flat latex paint, but in this case I'm using the quartz based primer. Rolled it on with a quarter inch nap roller. Two coats, quartz primer cleans up with soap and water. Uh, you can tint it with pigment, never paint. Pigment is concentrated, paint is not. Paint will dissolve, uh, be, it'll oversaturate the material and break it down. So we're going to use our tools, high quality stainless steel, trowel and uh, spatula. Toscano plaster is an acrylic, interior only, cleans up with soap and water. Tints with pigment, never paint. And I've tinted this to a dark gold. What we're going to do with the first coat is 100% coverage over the entire surface quite simple. If that's my ceiling, there you go, come down, come up this corner, I don't need more material. It's, it's, this product gives you very nice coverage. You can see that's one coat so far and it covers that primer and I'm not piling it on. And I can't pile it on, if I put this on too thick it will crack. Now this plaster will dry about 30 to 40 percent lighter than the color that you see when it's wet, so always make a dry sample. We're not trying to go for perfect, perfect smooth base, but we want a nice, even, uniform, consistent pattern. We don't want it to be crazy all over the place, so we're going to finish this, let it dry 100 percent and come back and finish it in just a little bit. See you after this dries. Okay, we're 100% dry, moving on. Same trial. Spatula, this time we're gonna take our light gold tinted Venetian Toscano. And we're gonna do 100% coverage over this with a tighter pull. I'm gonna pull it pretty tight because we want some of that base color to poke through. You gotta remember, this is gonna dry lighter. So a lot of what you're seeing right now, the darker color and the base color, the, what, the lighter color is actually gonna rehydrate the base color a little bit. So it's gonna take on a little bit darker appearance for a little while. And then this color is gonna lighten up here just in a little bit. Okay, it's that simple. Nice, tight coat. So we can see some of that coming through. Let this dry, and we're going to tape off for our stripes. Let's see after it dries. So we're dry, we're moving on. Now what we're going to do is take our low-tack blue tape, the orange core, which means it has less tack to it than regular blue tape. It's also a little bit thinner. What we're going to do is mark off some stripes. Now I'm also going to kind of delint this on my shirt a little bit because this plaster is fresh. I don't want to take any chances of uh, damaging it. So if I was on a project, I'd actually you know, take the time to measure these off, use a level, make sure they're nice and straight. But it's a sample board. Not that that doesn't mean anything, but it just has to be a pretty close approximation of what we're going to do. So we'll just do two stripes for this guy. Now. I'm going to go back to my dark gold color, which is here, and I'm actually going to change my tool so I can control this a little bit better. I'm going to use what some referred to as a Japan scraper, just a scraper, stainless steel. What you got to do is be careful when you look at these or use these. They're stamped out of a large piece of metal, so when they stamp them, there's usually a 
ridge or a cup. So it looks like this guy has his cup this way. You want, so if you make sure these two tips go away from the surface or the cup goes up away from the surface, if you go like that and the tips are down, you get railroad tracks. The reason I'm using is this, I'm gonna do more of a uh, pattern right there. So I'm gonna take my gold plaster, just a little bit, and I'm gonna put it right in the center, okay? And I'm just going to kind of put it on with that cross hatch pattern. Some people prefer to do wall finishes completely with these tools. I used to until I discovered they're not discovered, but I, I thought it was easier than a trial, but the trial is way more time, cons or time saving for me anyway. All right, that's it. Now we're gonna let this dry, come back, do our next step, see after this dries. Okay, so, plaster's dried. I'm gonna remove my tape. When I remove my tape, I'm gonna basically pull away from my line. Not basically, I, I am, and I pull it almost flat back on itself. That, if you try to just pull and lift, and your plaster could release and leave some uh, well, just remove some of your plaster. And it's best to do your stripes the day, full day after this coat has dried. I mean, you don't want to go in there too soon thinking, oh yeah, it's dry. Like if you stick your hand on it, it feels cold. There's still moisture in there. Don't put tape on it. Because what's going to happen, it's going to be released. You're going to have a mess. All right. And don't pull too quickly, just take your time. Patience is a virtue when you do these things. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is my trowel, and I'm going to take just a straight tint base of Toscano right out of the can, no color. Okay? I need to pull this pretty tight to hold a little block here. And skim white over the whole surface. I'm only using small amounts because I don't want to take a chance and get too much. Now this is a very transparent plaster, so in that you got to remember this is going to dry lighter. Even the white, it's not going to be so stark white. And then. We need to burnish. So we're gonna let this dry, come back and burnish it up. So as always, I'll see you after this dries. Okay, I've let it dry. I'm gonna come back, burnish it with a trowel. It's in that nice, what we call humid or love stage when a plaster is still workable, manageable, let you do fun stuff, likes to do fun stuff versus completely dry when it's over said and done. Okay, don't have to work super hard on these plasters. It's the beauty of good plaster. This is acrylic. Why can't I ever get this thing to shine just right for you? Got all the whites on there. That's why. There's a lot going on, but you get the idea. See that shine? So it looks like it's busy, but it's pretty slick. Super slick. Okay, now, because we're gonna put a tinted wax over this, I'm gonna take a clear wax first and seal the plaster, because we're gonna use walnut wax after this. So I'm gonna take my clear. Sorry, I'm getting cold. Seal this thing like always, 100% coverage with the clear. The clear wax is the Italian polishing wax, cleans up with soap and water. Comes crystal clear and it also comes in various colors. To make the walnut wax, we just have recipe cards where you just add pigments to it if you want to try it yourself. Or we'll just have it ready mixed and sent to you. 
And there's other walnut waxes out there, but be careful, they're not all the exact same coloration or color recipes. Okay, I think we're good, 100% coverage. Let's grab our lint-free, color-free rag. Lint-free because we don't want to leave any lint particles in the plaster or in the wax, I mean, sorry. Color-free because we don't want the wax to pull color out and discolor our wax. And for this, I'm just using a cheesecloth, but you could always use a car buffer, and I do on big projects. Even small projects, it's not going to hurt anything. But we got to close that, plat, that wax up in order for the walnut to go over top of it. If we don't, it's just going to absorb it all in, make things a little bit more difficult to work. Okay. All right, now our walnut wax. Let's put this clear wax away. Don't want to get anything into that. Stir it up a little bit. Get a little fluffy side. All right, here we go. Move my things out of my way. Walnut wax. See, that wax is super strong. Color is really, really intense. So once I get it on here, I'm going to grab my rag, come back and buff some of this off. Because that's a lot. I just want hints of it. But see, without that clear wax, oh, this could have been, this could have went bad super fast. Better safe than sorry, right? Sounds like it's time for a new table. Okay, just buffing that out. Well, I'm not really buffing it out, I'm pulling the excess off. And this is a little strong down here, so I'm just going to take a rag with some clear wax on it. Go back in there and soften some of this up. My clear wax will act like an eraser in areas I'm not real happy with and pull that dark stuff down, or tone it down, I should say. I know, this plaster finish has a lot of work. I get it. It has a lot of layers, but that's what makes it interesting. Just going to go in there and get some of that. Okay, let it dry. I'm going to get a fresh rag because this one's toast. And soften this up. Or, I'm sorry, polish this up. And here we go. And we'll get rid of this blue tape. Take a look at what we have. See what we got here. Come on. It's gonna be one of those days where the tape just doesn't want to let go, probably. Alright. Hopefully I'm not gonna get ahead of myself and pull away from the plaster like always. Don't pull with in case something were to come with it. So the last thing you want to do is trash your plaster. You've got a little overzealous pulling off your tape. Let's see. There it is. I know the stripes are a little hard to see, but that's the idea. You don't want this in your face when you come into a house. 
nice, soft, subtle look. Well, there you have it, Venetian plaster, multiple layers, colored wax, creating stripes. My name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland. I want to thank you for watching. If you get a chance, visit the website, thefauxschool.com, and do me a favor and hit that subscribe and like button down below. I'd really appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.